This subscriber wonders, how do we use filters and get quick access to them? This powerhouse of a feature allows you to easily view a subset of your tasks based on specific parameters like list membership, tags, due dates, and many others. You can even combine these parameters at will to get highly granular, meaning you can filter in basically endless ways. To set up a filter, make sure you have TickTick Premium active. You'll find a link in the description to create or upgrade your account. Then, navigate to filters on the left-hand side and press the plus button. This will prompt the filter creation menu. In the first field, you can set a name and an optional emoji for your filter, which I highly recommend for visual recognition. Next, you'll be able to select one or multiple list memberships to filter for. After that, you can select for various tag options, again, including one or multiple tags. Alternatively, you can filter for tasks that do not have any tag. Note that the default logic operator for this menu is set to OR, not AND. For example, you can select for both tasks with and without tags within the same filter, which is a contradiction, but this means you're allowing either one to pass through, effectively allowing everything. Keep this in mind to avoid confusing outputs. For dates, you can select from a variety of options. Interestingly, every option here is dynamic, meaning you can only select for values that will evolve based on today's date, as opposed to filtering for set dates or date ranges on a calendar. Next up, you can filter for priorities, which is fairly straightforward. If you're sharing at least one list with another TickTick user, you have the ability to assign tasks to one another. If you want to filter out tasks to be performed by others, intuitively you may think you just select assign to me. However, this will filter out any tasks that have no assignee. And this is something you probably don't want because there's no benefit in adding the extra step of assigning a task to someone in a list if that list is only used by you and that someone thus is always going to be just you. Luckily, TickTick thought of this, so if you want to achieve this, make sure to select Not Assigned in addition to Assigned to Me. You're able to filter for the presence of certain keywords as well. This includes both the task title as well as the description. Finally, you're able to filter for only tasks, notes, or both. My recommendation in general is always to keep your filters as simple as possible and only add in a parameter when you want to narrow down further. In addition to the basic filter menu we just covered, which should be enough for the vast majority of use cases, there is an advanced filtering menu that offers more of a DIY approach. The main functional difference is that you can combine AND as well as OR operators at will. This also means it can lead to invalid results, like filtering for tasks that have and don't have tags at the same time. This will only show after you created the filter though, which I wish TickTick would help prevent by warning you ahead of time. Despite all these filtering options, I only use two types of filters. One is a custom today filter that excludes tasks to anyone else as I do share some lists with other TickTick users. And the other main filtering mechanism I have in place is based on two tags. I follow the getting things done method, which differentiates between next actions tasks that are available, and other actions like planned or someday, etc. With GCD, you also divide your tasks up into categories called contexts, which are basically conditions that need to be met to be able to complete a task, like being at home. I designate contexts with an additional tag, and I use filters to combine the next tag and the particular context tag. This allows me to easily see what I can do now within any given context. For accessing these filters quickly, I pin them, which makes them accessible from the very top left corner. Here's where the value of using emojis for recognition really stands out. To do this, just right click a filter and select pin. You can undo this from the same menu as well, and you can do this for tags or lists too, though I prefer keeping it exclusively for my filters. For an even more holistic approach to quick access, I use TickTick's widgets functionality across multiple devices, which can also be used to show specific filters. A lot of my tasks are device specific. For example, I have a mobile banking app, which means anything to do with paying people has to be done on my phone. Hence, these tasks get the phone context. And using the next action phone filter as a widget displayed on my phone 
means I get to see what I have to do on that specific device while I'm using it. TickTick allows you to use these widgets across multiple devices, and I'll dedicate a separate video to widgets soon. If you have a TickTick question you would like to see me cover in a video, leave a comment.